Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Well, we've got a funny man coming back on the show for the second time, Mr. Ara Anton from Santa Monica, California, will be joining us to talk about how your club can throw better events. He'll talk about his Midwestern tour, which included Dick Butkus' tournament, and you'll find out how you can get Ara to do a little consulting for your club absolutely free. That's the best price, right? R is a really funny guy, so you're going to enjoy that interview coming up in just a couple of minutes. I want to remind you about the new show, Let's Play Through. This week, we released our episode on Stream Song. I got to play Stream Song Blue, which is a Tom Doak masterpiece with the boys. But beyond that, we got to do some bass fishing, which was awesome. I didn't catch anything, (laughs) but they did, and that was great. And we did some archery, some sporting clays. We ate some of the finest food I've ever tasted. And I mean that. I've been all over the world eating lots of food. And it's right in my back backyard, basically, here at Stream Song. And we tasted food from six different restaurants. I'm fairly certain I had a 5,000-calorie meal at one point, And it was absolutely delicious. But if you want to check out the show, if you haven't already, go to letsplaythrough.com and make sure that you hit subscribe. That's really important. Hit the red subscribe button. Just like a podcast, it's absolutely free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And that would help me grow the channel. It would be really huge if you would do that. All right. Well, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. If you are at the Professional Club Marketing Association's National Conference, I would love to hear what your feedback was. I unfortunately did not get to go this year because my wife's birthday fell on the same date. And I promised her long ago that I would not travel on her birthday anymore. I did it once or twice and basically broke her heart. And that won't ever happen again. So I missed this year's conference, but I'd love to hear a recap of it. So if anyone who is there wants to come on the show and talk about what they learned at the PCMA National Conference, it's always a good show and I'd love to hear it. All right, without further ado, let's bring on the funny man. Mr. Ara Anton. Here we go. All right. My next guest is based out of Santa Monica, California. He was just featured in Golf Digest magazine in the May 2018 issue as golf's new funny guy. Some of his TV and film credits include Something's Gotta Give, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and How I Met Your Mother, which is one of my favorite shows. He tours and performs at country clubs across the country, and he just got back from his Midwest tour. Please welcome the Country Club comic. Ara, how are you, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing well. You're cutting into my surfing and yoga time here. Yeah, you know, that's the that Southern day. California <laughs> life, right? <laughs> it's early. It's early morning there. Thank you for coming on and getting up. And uh, yeah, sorry you couldn't catch the wave. I couldn't catch the waves this morning because uh, I, was, I was waiting for this interview, which is absolutely awesome. By the way... Let's play through. I've seen the trailers. I've seen uh, it it looks awesome. I cannot wait for you to come out here to Southern California and uh, hopefully get an episode done out here. And I won't play in the group. I'll just caddy for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how we met originally. You were caddying for me at Bel Air Country Club. And so that's how we kind of struck up a conversation. That's how this whole thing got kicked off. That's cool. This whole thing got kicked off. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy because that was almost three years ago. And uh, you were there at the the infancy of the Country Club comic. I mean, you know, prior to that, I was doing stand-up for 20 years. But, you know, ever since, you know, performing at Bel Air, that, that was basically the break that got me to be the Country Club comic with, you know, some of these celebrities that uh, have have endorsed me, backed me. And I know Jim Nance so, I mean, is a big fan of yours. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. I got a chance to do, you know, uh, Bel Air country club twice and perform there. And, uh, I, I, he actually, he helped me. Yeah. Uh, he got me that solid recommendation letter. And that was the, the calling card that I used to contact other clubs. And, you know, since, you know, the past three years, it's been, I've done over 25, 30 clubs now. And it's just, 
you know, it's just going to get even, I think, bigger, especially after this Midwest tour. To yeah. This thing went. I want to get into that with went. you. Yeah. How'd the Midwest tour go? You just got back from the middle of the country. I know you were doing, uh, I saw some videos you created. So tell us about it. Oh, well, you know, I did, I did five shows there and, um, I basically, you know, I did Conway Farms, Evanston Golf Club, Urbana Country Club, uh, Ridge Country Club. It was it was a great, you know, experience. And then um, I hosted and performed for the Dick Butkus Celebrity Golf Classic in uh, Chicago. And all those shows went really well. And to be honest with you, I was actually a little nervous when I was on the flight to Chicago doing that first show over at Conway. Cause I was just like, okay, here we go. This is going to be, it's cause the shows are just bang, bang, bang. They're one, one after another, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. So first show went well. Um, and then the finale show was the, the Dick Butkus celebrity classic invitation, which was a huge treat for me. Cause I got to interview, you know, Dan Hampton, uh, Otis Wilson, uh, uh, Dick Butkus and a lot of other, you know, Chicago celebrities I grew up watching because I'm originally from Evanston, Illinois. And um, so it was great. And of course, in some of the interview clips, which I have, um, if, you know, somebody gets in contact with me for a consultation, I send them the five minute, uh, five minute uh, teaser video of all the interviews I did. So that's basically one of the things that I do. I can, I can host and, you know, a golf event, a member guest, you know, do 10 to 15 minutes up front, yeah. or I can yeah. do a stag night uh, and do 30 to 45 minutes, or I can do a couple's night. Right. And the majority of those shows in the Midwest were, were couple's nights. So how did you get the, how how did you did get the Dick Buckus gig to begin with? You know, it, it's funny because I got the Buckus gig. I, I did a commercial with Dick about 20 years ago, right when I got out of college. And I remember in May, or I, I did a, I did um, a commercial with him. About 10 years later, I'm at Bel Air Country Club. I'm caddying. And I end up caddying for Dick Butkus and his son, Matt. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? So I kept in contact with the son, Matt. And, um, I shot him an email back in May saying, Hey, I'm going to be in Chicago. I'm going to be doing my you know, the Midwest tour. And he goes, Oh man, you got to host our, our celebrity classic we have this year. So that, that's how it came to be. So it was, it just, everything worked. Every, everything just clicked. So I added that show, which was on the tail end of the Midwest tour. And, you know, it was, it was, of course, they're, they, they, in the video, you know, if you, any of you, uh, listeners reach out to me for a consultation or you're interested in my services at countryclubcomic.com. I'll send you the five minute clip. It's, and of course they pull the pranks on me. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. they, they pranked me a couple of times out on the golf course. But of course I, you know, I said, yeah. well, what are you going to do? That's the gig <laughs> I signed up for. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Know? It was a very enjoyable video. I watched it. I th- thought it was a really good, good little piece that you put together. So for folks who don't know your act, you know, what do you talk about during your act and what's really unique about what you do and say are. So, you know, I, I'm a lot different than any of these stand up comics out there because a lot of these comics, um, what they do is they, they talk about politics. I mean, no one wants to hear that in this day and age. I talk about golf. I talk about the golf caddy stories that I have, whether it's caddying for celebrities um, meeting celebrities. Like I have this one bit that I do, I, you know, I was in the movie, something's got to give. I did a scene with Jack Nicholson. Two years later, I'm at Bel Air country club and Nicholson comes out and I caddy for him. And the punchline is, you know, after four and a half hours of golf with him, he still didn't remember my name. So I tell that story until the first time I met Bill Murray when I was 16 years old at Westmoreland Country Club when I was in the uh, pursuit of the Evans Scholarship. Uh, I talk about the first time I met Jim Nance and performing at the Tradition State Dinner. I also talk about, uh, you know, the difference between men's golf and ladies golf. Would you consider your show like G-rated, PG-rated, R-rated, or do you kind of 
craft it based on the uh, market you're in? Um, it, it, it's all dependent. Now, you know, with stag nights, you, you know, you, you can get up in the R category, you know, um, sure. w- with couples nights, it's PG 13 soft R. I do not do X. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 that, that's, um, you, you save know, those, I'm you save those for dude. the laugh factory. Yeah, I'm not the dice man of <laughs> golf, you know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing rickety, dickety, hickety dock jokes <laughs> right. uh, like the dice man does um, for golf. But yeah, I, I don't do X. I mean, I, and again, R is very soft R. Sure. I'm not dropping F bombs. I'm not swearing in my act. You know, I, I had somebody come up to me after a show. Uh, in the Midwest, they go, wow, I'm really impressed. I'm like, well, why? He goes, you didn't swear once in your act. <laughs> oh, wow. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't use any. I, he goes, I, he goes, I'm shocked. I've never seen that happen. He goes, you didn't swear once. Oh. And of course, like, I, you know, I, I'm doing a couple's night. Right. I mean, uh, so, you know, some of the other stuff you can get away with it at, at sure. stag nights. But, you know, I, and I got a couple's night coming up. Yeah. Uh, October 26th at San Diego Country Club. So, you know, it, again, it's PG-13, very soft R. And sure. It's, uh, what, what, and is, just, what is one of the, like, the best compliments that you've ever gotten when you finished a show and someone came up to you out of curiosity? You know, it, it's, it happened four straight times at the four country clubs I performed at. Every, from every single club, that I went to this summer, there was always a guy that came up to me and said, because these were all couples nights I did, um, except for the the New York show at Liberty National. That was a, that was a kind of a stag night. I hosted the putting contest and then I launched into my act. Every single guy at the country club said to me, they go, we really like your stuff. And we know it's couples night and we could tell that you're taking the you know, your foot off the gas pedal. We know you can go further. And I'm like, well, you know, it's couples night. We're having fun. I want everyone to have fun. I dot my eyes, cross my T's. So that is to me a compliment because they know that I have another gear I can go to, which obviously I can. And uh, it's, it's just telling. Have you ever uh, pressed your foot on the gas pedal like that? And uh, maybe, maybe took a risk on stage at one of these clubs? You know, um, I haven't. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It, it's because country clubs are different than comedy clubs. At comedy clubs, yes, sure, I have done that. But at country clubs, I, I refuse to do that for the sake of getting a laugh and risk. Because the one thing about country clubs is – you really only get one shot to do it. It's a one nighter. Right. And you got to get it absolutely right. And if one person complains at the country club, you'll never be able to set foot Hmm. on the, you know, at that country club again. So I'm very, very cautious. That's why every show that I do, I have a 30 minute consultation with the general manager and I go over verbatim what I'm going to say oh, wow. and the type of material. Oh, wow. Yeah. I do that with every single country club. 10 days before you book me, we sit down, we, you know, we Skype or we talk over the phone and I go over the whole act verbatim. So there's no surprises. And so you're not, you know, you're not going to have to worry about me going overboard up. Um, I, I can mean, I can just, hear yeah. some GMs around the country breathing a sigh of relief right there because I think that's the big oh, difference yeah. between being and, someone and, who and, knows and who knows the yeah. market and someone who's just you know this is their first rodeo. You know it's 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 funny because when I was at the CMA convention um, my first year in San Francisco, I, I had a general manager come up to me and go, "Hey man, we'll never hire a comedian in our club because the last guy we hired, I almost got fired and two members resigned." And I said to him, I'm like, well, wait a minute. How did you vet your comedian? Right. And he he didn't have an answer for me. Yeah. So didn't you know, clearly I mean, didn't. <laughs> he clearly didn't. I mean, <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's so important. I, and again, that's why you hire professionals in the field who are acquainted with what it is you do. I see the same thing, honestly, in, in as a marketing agency, because a lot of times we're going up to bid against a, a local marketing agency, for instance. And I tell them, hey, you know, there's a big difference when someone knows what can be said, what can't be said within a 501c7 limitations and, and someone who, who, can, who can speak the same language as your staff, right? I mean, you've got every industry has got specific um, nomenclature and specific, you know, things that happen with their jobs. And, and, and it's so important to hire someone who's an expert in that field. So that's why they should get in touch with you, certainly, Ara. Um, tell us about some of those markets you have performed in. Well, the, the, the major markets that um, I've performed at have been uh, Illinois and California. Those are the two major markets that, uh, and, and Indiana, and then I did a show in Wisconsin, in uh, Texas was another um, market that uh, I performed at. It was the Horseshoe Bay Resort. Um, What's it like from so, like one market to another? I mean, you got to try to craft some jokes around like people in Chicago must have a completely d- different sense of humor than people on the West Coast. And of course, people on the East Coast and West Coast, there's always that rivalry. So you craft your shows based on that. Do you think about that ahead of time? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I go, you know, I've been doing stand up for 20 years. So there are markets. I mean, all those markets I've mentioned, I have done my, you know, stand up in those markets. So I basically have an idea of what they're looking for, but they're also what I do. And I'm giving all my secrets away here on private club radio with Gabe. Uh, (laughs) There's my radio voice for you. Uh, (laughs) What I also do is when I get booked, I ask the general manager to send me over their newsletter of their club. Oh, that's smart. So I get a feel for what's going on. It's like, oh, Tuesday night is crab night or Wednesday night is bridge club. Or, you know, I so again, I get an idea of what they're doing at the club. Right. And then, of course, I can make, you know, crafts and jokes. Around it. I yeah. mean, there was one club <laughs> that had an adult pool party in wisconsin and then i'm like oh yeah it's a lot different than the adult pool parties out here in los angeles you You told me what went on in that in some of those mansions around bel air country club i my jaw dropped it's it's uh it's definitely a different scene you know i went into that whole little bit uh like very carefully without you know without like explicit innuendos if you know what i mean that's funny well, I, I definitely right. recommend that some managers reach out to you and just learn a little bit more. I like the fact that you put the research into it ahead of time. I think that makes all the difference uh, when you're when you're thinking about who you're going to book for your club. Definitely think, put Ara on the on the map there. Now, uh, besides Country Club Comic, you're now actually giving some educational seminars to some of the CMAA chapters and and, and some other things. So tell us about that, Ara. Yeah, you, you know, doing this for. Uh, for so long and, and diving into organizations like the CMAA, uh, the conference actually you turned me on to um, when we had that discussion about three years ago. I have noticed that there are so many seminars out there in the country club arena that deal with food and beverage, idea fairs, but there is no seminar out there that talks about entertainment. And my seminar that I have, it's an hour seminar. It's called Booking Country Club Entertainment, the Top 10 Keys to Success. And I basically, in a nutshell, you know, the learning objectives are, you know, I analyze why past events have succeeded or failed. I have a survey that gets sent out to all if you take, I give the survey out so you can send it out to your membership. And it basically just goes through, you know, what events have worked, what events haven't. And this is not just for comedians. This is for everybody. If you're going to hire a speaker, if you're going to hire a band, if you're going to hire the guy 
on stilts that can hit a 500 yard drive or the dueling piano act, which I always seem to lose out to for entertainment at country clubs. Hey, those dueling, I wish I was a dueling piano act. That'd be awesome. Right. Just stand up and going. It'd be great. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I mean, so, and also to maximize the performer's performance, because, you know, like one of the, one of the keys that I talk about in the 10 keys of success is, you know, setting the stage. Basically you create an environment that supports the performer. You know, you have to discuss equipment needs in advance. Like, for example, like for a speaker, you want to use rectangular tables for speakers or comics. So the audience can give their full attention. You know, circular tables are great for bands because, you know, it kind of encourages conversation. So these are the little things that, you know, that are so overlooked in the entertainment uh, section of country clubs. And I talk about that. It's an hour seminar. And I also do consulting for an hour with a general manager. And we basically just go over, you know, things that are in the survey, like, you know, you got a member guest inv invitational. What is your signature event? Do you have a cigar stag night? Do you have a new member night? Do you have a couple's night? Um, you know, on the survey, it says of the above, which entertainment was most enjoyed, which was least enjoyed? What's your age, age range of the call? I mean, just like doing accounting. Yeah. Sounds very comprehensive. You do, yeah. You, you have to go through the process and, right. and general managers are not, they're well, they're not, not booking entertainment. That's that's probably not probably not their skill set. So that, that's great that you can help them with this. Yeah, and, and a lot of times the people that I'm dealing with are intern event coordinators. That are because the general manager already has too much stuff to do. So they're like, okay, you book this guy, set this up. But a lot of times they're not even asking me the right questions. Right. Like, okay, do you need a cordless mic? Right. Um, Is your show G rated or R rated? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're <laughs> exactly. I'm just gonna walk in there, and uh, you know, right. my big joke is, you know, all entertainers need to have what they call specialty insurance. Yeah, and I have that. Nice. And general managers don't even ask if they have, you know, if the performer has, enter, you know, entertainers insurance. It's, it's, and I do, and it's up to a million dollars. And basically, what that means is, I can come to your club and cause a million dollars worth of damage. Sure. Just joking, general managers. That's just a joke. <laughs> How about just does joking. that does that get into mental and uh, physical emotional stress? <laughs> yeah, right. so, you know, I, for example, like if I'm on stage and the mic slips out of my hand and hits a member right. in the head, sure, yeah. Who do you think he's going to sue? Right, he's going to sue the club. Well, no, I love. Not I love. I love the idea of the checklist. I think it's it's fantastic. Really just to walk people through what they should be looking at. And whether they hire you or not, I think going through that process is really important. If folks want to reach out to you either to book themselves for one of your seminars or for one of these consultations, what's the best way to do it, Ara? Well, the best way to do it is this. just go to countryclubcomic.com and uh, go to the website. And on the website... You'll see in the top hand, you can see some video clips. You can see the, the, you know, how to get in contact with me. Just email me and uh, we'll do a consultation free. I, I just want to know more about your event. That's it. There's no strings attached. Uh, you know, we'll set up a time, get a hold of me and just tell me about your event. And I'll just tell you if I can be value add to your event, whether it's a member guest, invitational, ladies invitational. I mean, I, I, I can do it all. That's awesome. So, uh, countryclubcomic.com. That's it. All you got to do is do that and then just get a hold of me uh, via email and we'll set up a time. Countryclubcomic.com. I love that. Great, great web domain there. R enjoyed it thoroughly as always and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day, sir. Okay. Thanks for having me, Gabe. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of, <laughs> I almost said, let's play through this edition of private club radio, <laughs> but go over to let's play through, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget. Anyway, I'll catch you back next week here on private club radio. And until then, here's to your membership success. Private club radio is brought to you by concert golf partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Visit concertgolfpartners.com 
to learn more about the recapitalization process. 